Hey YouTube, it's Robin. Um, I figured I would do part three of my miscarriage story. <clears throat> um, and that's basically just my DNC and recovery. So, um, I can't remember where I left off last time. <laughs> um, but my DNC went really well. It went really easy. It was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And, um, my doctor was phenomenal. I love my OB. I cannot wait to go see her when I am pregnant again. Um, she's just, she's just a great, great, great person. She's a great personality and, um, super, super sweet and very gentle with the situation. So, um, I remember just going in there and knowing that that was the task that had to be done. And, um, it was for the better for everyone, for me to recover, for my husband to kind of recover and not um, have to miscarry naturally, which I wasn't allowed to anyways because I was too far along. Because um, at that point, if you miscarry naturally, you can actually leave tissue left behind in the uterus. So um, it was the best decision to do a DNC. So when I went in that Thursday, I was supposed to go away. I was supposed to leave that Friday for the weekend. Um, we go to this huge cookout uh, <clears throat> at my campground. <clears throat> um, and we were supposed to leave on Friday. So I had planned to leave work early Friday and take – no, I had planned to take Friday off. <clears throat> and I was going to come back to work on Monday. Sorry. <clears throat> um. So when I called my office to tell them Thursday that I wasn't coming into work because I just found out I miscarried. And then Friday, I said Friday I had to have surgery. Um, so I had surgery on Friday. And then the reason was they only had one opening on Friday and she would not wait for me to come back and she would not let me go away. And she didn't even want me to go away after surgery. But I said, you know what? I think the best healing thing is to just get away. And not be moping around the house like sad and to be around, <clears throat> around family and friends <coughs> and not know what is wrong with me um, was the best um, decision that my husband and I came to. So uh, I got out. It was super quick, super easy. I got out. I was bleeding um, when I left. They gave me pain meds, but I didn't take any. I just took, um, I think ibuprofen, and I bled for a while, I, we, so we got home, we got in the car, I was a little sore, I, it wasn't too bad, and then, um, we drove three hours to go to our campground, and I got up there and I was okay the first, the Friday, and then Saturday was a pretty tough day for me. I remember I was like in the trailer a lot crying and my hormones dropped so quickly from the DNC that I, uh, it just, I, my emotions plummeted and I obviously was upset anyways, but like this was like to a completely new level of upset and I remember I was like convulsing, like shaking because I was just crying so bad and it was because my, I was so far along in my HCG level and every, all my hormones were so high and I had just, the baby had just lost its heartbeat when I discovered that I miscarried. So then to have the whole tissue taken out, it was just a plummet, um, of hormones so I was Saturday was a tough day and there was a lot of kids there my friends all have kids so that was really hard and um it was it was a difficult day for me um I I think that was far wor the worst day Sunday was a little bit better and we drove home on Sunday and I was supposed to go to back to work on Monday and I just couldn't do it I just couldn't go back to work on that Monday I just I was not ready to return to life um, after losing life, pretty much. Um, so, from there on out, they told me that I could get my period from anywhere from two to eight weeks. And I did a lot of research, and a lot of women actually get pregnant right soon after miscarrying because they ovulate really quickly. And... I actually got my cycle, I think, two weeks to the day after 
no, two weeks to the day after my um, surgery, I got a positive OPK. And I was still getting positive. Um, no, at that point, I had no positive HCG because I kept taking the strips to see when the HCG was completely out of my system. And I had gotten a positive OPK, and I was like, what the hell? How am I ovulating already? But two weeks after that, I got my cycle. So I got my cycle a month after, which was fantastic. And But from there on out, my cycles have not been that fabulous. Uh, that was probably the best cycle that I've had um, since everything. Uh, so, But the DNC really wasn't that bad. It was easy to recover, and they were able, because I was far enough along, there was enough tissue to test um, genetically. And that's um, when I went in for my follow-up two weeks later with the doctor. She told me that there was an extra set of chromosomes. So what most likely happened was um, my egg allowed two sperm to fertilize it. So, you know, at the time that sucked, but it also was not funny. But the fact that we thought for two years that we had male factor infertility and here we are, two sperm went into the egg. So it's a fluke thing. It doesn't happen all the time and probably will never happen again. Um, hopefully it will never happen again. Uh, and it's probably a mixture between the two of us. Like my egg quality, now that I'm learning about all this PCOS stuff, my egg quality probably wasn't great. And his sperm decided to be super sperm that day. So uh, the baby had an extra set, a full extra set of chromosomes. So there was, I forget, 60-something. I don't know. I can't remember how many chromosomes people have. Isn't that terrible? And there's no way the baby can survive outside the womb. There are many women that actually carry close to term and then deliver. Um, obviously, there's certain things you can find out along the way, or if you have any of the testing done, um, they can find out if the baby has it. But luckily, my body recognized something was wrong when my uterus stopped growing. So my uterus stopped growing at seven weeks. So to be about 10, 11 weeks pregnant and only have a uterus seven weeks, my body knew. It knew a long time that this was not going to be a viable pregnancy. And I'm thankful for that because it wouldn't um, – it gave me a little bit of trust in my body because with TTCing, you hate that your body isn't functioning correctly and it's frustrating that you can't control it to function correctly. So – to know that my body knew something was wrong and it did something about it was a, f a great feeling. It was a comfort, and I definitely started to trust my body a little bit more. Granted, the past um, almost a year, almost 12 months, have been a lot of back and forth with trust with my body. But, um, so yeah, so... Then she said I could find out the gender, and I said I didn't want to know. We, My husband and I had talked, and we said we didn't want to know. <sighs> so we didn't find out. We just called it our angel baby and an it. We didn't really talk about it a lot for the first couple of months. And then I had to go back to the OB in January to get pick up paperwork, um, like all the notes and stuff from the DNC, to bring to my RE's office because at that point it had been two full cycles and I was just like, we need to go back. So um, I picked up the paperwork and I got into the car and it was after work and I, I got into the car and I remember, I don't even know why I opened it up. Maybe out of curiosity what the notes were, but I opened it up and I flipped it open and in the first page it had the gender. Um, and once I saw three X's, I knew it was obviously a girl. And yes, you're supposed to have two X's, but my, our baby had an extra set of chromosomes. So obviously my husband has super girl sperm. Um, and it was comforting to know the gender. Um, it was better. It allowed healing. Um, you know, I don't have a, a face to go with a name or anything like that, but I have a gender to go with the baby we lost, which means a lot. And it helped me recover a lot. I don't think 
my it really hit my husband until probably a couple months ago and he just really broke down and realized like wow like in May we would have been due and we would have had a beautiful baby girl um if all things were right in the world but we didn't and I think that's when it kind of hit him so where that leads us now is my current situation and the DNC obviously is something I never want to experience again but it was an experience to make me stronger in the situation and I feel like I can tackle anything that comes with pregnancy and I am so ready to be pregnant and so ready to deliver a baby and I'm so ready to have a family so yeah it sucks and a lot of women miscarry a lot more than once um I've technically well they've said that I've probably had two chemicals and then um one Mis first trimester miscarriage. So, you know, there's women out there that have stillborns and have multiple miscarriages and no answers. So I'm thankful that I have answers for the miscarriage that we did endure. And I'm thankful for the strength that it gave me to keep going and keep pursuing this. And um, as we sit here three years after starting TTCing, I feel like I was so... I don't know, so not knowing what the situation was three years ago, thinking, I'm young, I'm young, everyone tells you you're young, you're going to get pregnant easy, and it's not always the case. So that's where it leaves us. Um, I miscarried on October 4th, 2012, and I had a DNC on October 5th, 2012, so we'll see how that weekend goes. I uh, the due date was actually a lot easier for me. Um, it actually like went by and it didn't even phase me. Um, because it just, it was just a date. It wasn't a day that the baby was gonna be born. It was just a date and it went by. So I think the miscarriage anniversary might be a little bit more hard or more difficult on us just to know where we were a year ago in the situation we were in. Hopefully, in a month, I have fantastic news, whether it's I magically got pregnant or we are getting ready for IVF. And I know IVF is going to give us a, our family. I, I, just, I just have an amazing feeling about IVF. And, I mean, it would be a miracle if I got pregnant on my own, but who knows what's going to happen. I've kind of let go of control of that situation. I'm doing what I can do, and if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, IVF will be next. So thank you for listening to my story. It, I know it was a three-parter, and they were all really long, but it was really comforting for me to talk about it, and I felt a lot better after making my first two videos, and I feel a lot more positive about my situation, and I feel like there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm really excited about the next few months. And to share that journey with you guys is going to be phenomenal. So thank you for listening. And thank you for your comments. And I will see you guys soon.